In this session, I'm going to show you the steps to install and configure the IBM Key Radar SIM, the security information and event management. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. So let's visit this website, the developer.ibm.com slash keyradar slash CE. So this is the, uh, the link. And here we can actually find uh, the, um, what do you call this? The link to download Keyradar Community Edition uh, version 7.3.3. So this is the latest uh, edition at the moment. And what is actually Keyreader Community Edition? Yeah, this is actually a software. It's a, it's a fully featured free version of, you know, the famous Keyreader that is low in memory, low EPS, and also includes perpetual license. Yeah, so this version is specifically uh, released for the public to encourage users, students, security professional, and application developers to learn and experience the latest features of the key radar 7.3.3. There is no expiration or time limit. And this version is limited to 50 events per second and 5,000 network flows a minute. So, well, it's good enough for us to, you know, experience the, <clears throat> uh, I would say, open source uh, or community edition of the SIEM security incident, uh, security information and event management, such as, you know, uh, the other tools, uh, like, for example, v uh, the um, uh, Alien Vault, OSIM, or maybe Wazoo or any others uh you know similar tools okay so step number one we need to download key radar community edition uh in this case uh i'm going to download this with my uh what do you call this internet uh, downloader so it's gonna take a while but to speed up the the, the this video this tutorial uh, I have previously prepared uh, the downloaded version of the Keyreader Community Edition. So let's have a look. So I have the uh, folder called Keyreader and I have downloaded the Keyreader CE733GA underscore V underscore zero dot TAR. This is actually the uh, compressed format. So what I need to do is, um, you know, provi provided that uh, I've already downloaded this from the website uh, I've shown you this, uh, I mean, I've shown you, yeah. Uh, so the next thing to do is to right click and extract this zip file with the uh, seven zip, I'm uh, using seven zip and right, uh, extract to the same directory it will automatically create the new a uh, new directory or folder to hold the uh, extracted files. <clears throat> it's gonna take a while to actually extract uh, all of the files from the tar uh, zip. Yeah. Okay, so. I would expect that uh, we have the files extracted. Yeah. So let's have a look at the uh, folder. It will, uh, so notice that there's a folder called keyreader CE733GA. Yeah. Uh, created. And when you double click this, this one, you will see the same like uh, what I have uh, here. So we have several files like the dot mf file dot ovf which is stands for the open virtualization format yeah where you can actually compress all of the files into a, a single folder this is actually a default uh, i would say uh, uh 
what you call this uh, default uh, file format to uh, hold the uh, or used by many virtualization software such as VMware, VirtualBox, uh, and others. Yeah. So notice that we have several files. Yeah. And the next thing to do is you need to right click on the OVF file, which is the open virtualization format and select <clears throat> open with, yeah. So you can select whether you want to open it with for example, VirtualBox Manager, VMware Player, or even VMware Workstation. For in my case, uh, I am actually running uh, VMware Workstation version 15. So I'm going to use this as my default, uh, what do you call this, um, program to open the uh, OVF file. So let's click this one. And... Okay, in a few seconds, you'll see this import virtual machine. So when you right click open with this VMware, it will actually pop up with the um, prompt. Uh, you need to, uh, what do you call this? Uh, enter the new virtual machine name. Yeah. To be able to import this uh, virtual machine. So I will put as Jan 2020 with the capital letter. Yeah, sorry, Jan. 2020 yep oh sorry yeah then after that i can just create a folder somewhere here in my vm so yeah i'll put this into qce jan which i've created of course you can actually delete this and then uh you know create whatever new file you want to use so you can just go to any uh, any folder uh and you want to uh, you, that you want to be used to extract the file so let's just Q, put it as qce jan 2020 and click this one just to make sure it uh, it uh, it actually you know will be it will be used uh, you know to uh, hold the extracted files and select import <clears throat> So it's going to take a while to import this uh, VM or virtual machine. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, pause the video for a while until the importing process is completed. Yeah. Okay. Hang on for a while. Okay. Back to the uh, VM. So the importing process took about, you know, 10 minutes and now I am at this screen okay so let's uh, do a quick review on the virtual machine uh, settings so what you need to check is the uh, the settings uh, what do you call this the, 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 the default settings uh, used by the VM. Okay, so according to the website, we need to make sure that we have, you know, this uh, requirements like such as memory, uh, minimum re memory re uh, requirements is eight gigabyte or 10 gigabyte with the application, disk space 250 gigabyte. So we have, okay, let me repeat, memory minimum requirements is eight gigabyte or 10 gigabyte for best performance disk uh, space 150 gigabyte cpu two cores minimum or six cores recommended to speed up the process uh, and then one network adapter with uh, access to the internet is required a static public and private ip addresses is required for uh, for curator community edition and the assigned host name must be fully qualified domain name okay so after reviewing the uh, minimum requirements we need to of course uh, do some you know slight change or changes on the memory so let's increase the memory to eight gigabyte as per the uh, requirements or recommended requirements and then for the processor let's increase this to four processors because by default it was set to number processor two and number four processor one 
and then you might also want to use this virtualized intel vt-x or ebt or amd dash v slash rvi that would also you know helps you to help you to increase the uh, performance of your vm okay and the next thing to do is once we are done with the uh, you know changes on the virtual machine settings the next step is to power on this virtual machine <clears throat> and it's quick yeah so you just need to press enter and select the first one i mean the first uh, option okay and we got into the login uh what do you call this uh, prompt yeah so uh by default yeah you can actually uh, use the login that uh, was previously set uh it will automatically ask you to change the uh what do you call this the password so just use the root as the default uh localhost login now you will see that you are required to change your uh, your password immediately yeah root enforce so you can put new password should be uh it should be i mean the password should be the new password should be uh what you call this complex so you can put something like yeah okay then okay you can put any any password you like okay so the next thing thing to do is to actually run the setup yeah so uh, to run the setup you can just type ls to see what what is inside yeah and to make it easier for you to see the uh the progress i would personally uh you know recommend uh you to use the uh you know telnet like uh tool to connect to this uh, host so i'm going to check the ip address the command is not ifconfig yeah we normally use the ifconfig right so but the command is not this this one because for the um, centos version 7 the latest version of the centos linux operating system we need to use the ip address command or just type ipa yeah also like this it's okay so notice that I have the internet address of 192.168.1.2. That's my, uh, you know, default IP address. Yeah, remember that. Yeah, I forgot to mention that when you go to the settings, <clears throat> you can check the. Yeah, by default, the network adapter yeah, I'm using is bridge it was actually the default settings uh, that was actually set by the you know uh, i mean from the uh, from the default uh, what do you call this configuration uh, file that you have uh, extracted the ovf uh, the open virtualization format so we got this settings yeah network adapter was set to bridge meaning that it will uh, your virtual machine will connect directly to the physical network so if you have like wireless you'll get the ip address from your wireless access point okay so that's my ip 1.2 uh, yeah it could be like 1.10 or something like that right so uh let me open up <coughs> file explorer and I'm gonna show you on how to use the tool called Putty. Yeah. Run as admin. And because you know the IP address, you know the password, so you just type 192.168.1.2 and open. Just select yes. And notice that you'll see this party screen pop up that your party is running so next uh, step is to you know do some changes 
like for example the appearance yeah, this is not really important but if you like to you know deal with the uh, better you know font and size to later on uh you know when you want to type something it will be much clearer okay so let's log in to this um uh, qc yeah the key reader uh, community edition by typing root and of course the password that you have previ previously set okay now that you're inside the um, uh, vm or the key curator uh, community edition yeah so the next thing to do is to uh, look at the uh, files by typing ls now we found a uh, setup file yeah let's just la to see that oh okay the setup is actually pointing to this is actually a hard link pointing to slash opt ibm cloud something something right so let's do the setup so just type dot slash setup so this is actually the second step uh, oh sorry supposed to be the third step yeah so once you're you have downloaded the uh, ova or the ready-made uh, virtual machine the next step is to extract or import the uh, ov F or the OVA file, yeah, the virtual machine file. Uh, and then once you have successfully logged on and of course change the password previously, the third step is to do the setup, yeah, to run the setup. This setup will actually install the uh, key reader uh, completely, yeah. Just run the key reader setup, it will prompt you with this one and it says blah blah blah. Please enter to accept this term. Yeah, enter and press. Yeah, so you have to scroll down to read everything. You can use the page down. Yeah, and press Q to quit and press enter to accept again. It will automatically run this one and about to install Keyreader Community Edition. Do you wish to continue? Press yes or why to proceed and that's it all you need to do is just sit back and relax wait for the installation to finish okay so hang on for a while i'm going to uh, get back to you once the installation is done get back to our installation uh so here we are prompted with the installation completed successfully and you need to you know enter a password for the admin user this is used to log on to uh, to log into keyreader user interface so all you need to do is set the admin password so the username will be admin and the password will be the new password that you are setting up now and confirm the password And if the password or both passwords are correct, it will tell you the admin password has changed. Okay, so the next step to do is you can actually check whether the, uh, uh, what do you call this, the uh, service or services. Uh, one of the services is actually the Tomcat. So Curator is actually utilizing Tomcat. So let's check the status if uh, Tomcat has already running correctly. So what you need to do is just type system CTL status Tomcat. And it looks nice. Tomcat is running correctly. So you can see the active running. Yeah. And now you can launch. Uh, I'm going to use a different browser perhaps like uh, it may, maybe like Firefox to launch my Keyreader user interface. So just type 192.168.1.2, which is actually the IP address. If you forgot, you just need to type 
IP add and this is our IP and yeah I forgot to put the HTTPS because the default one was HTTP only you will see the prompt warning potential security risk ahead so just select advance and scroll down and select accept the risk and continue and this is what you will see IBM Curator Security Intelligent Community Edition so log on try to log in using admin and the password you have set up in the previous screen and you can save the password for easy access so scroll down and read the uh, license agreement okay select accept and yeah so just wait for a while you will see the uh, applications loading so meanwhile let's check uh, the uh, several things here yeah okay so um so we don't have anything here so this is the uh, main uh what do you call this screen of your ibm key reader security intelligent community edition okay so of course you can adjust the screen up to your preferences or your preference now the next step is once we're done with the installation um, I believe that we need to do uh, the uh, installation on the DSM so for that let me get back to you uh, soon just give me a minute okay. our next step once we're done with our download and install and of course uh, pre-configured settings by the uh, batch or the uh, script the next step is to add the data sources and for this we will need to um, you know uh, add the uh, device support module or DSM that receives event for parsing and normalizing to standard taxonomy format and just for your info, uh, not too many DSM uh, modules or the uh, device support modules are installed in our uh, community edition. Yeah, so you can check the uh, pre-installed DSM uh, from the documentation. So what you need to do is to find the list and add the list uh by i mean install the uh, dsm uh, required dsm by looking at the list and this is what i'm going to do so i'll be opening this getting events from sources that are not supported by the default installation yeah so let's do this first we need to mount the key reader community edition yeah, so we just copy this. Yeah. And I'm going back my uh what do you call this console connected from putty. So right click and you see sudo mount loop IBM ISO then Q. Just press tap and then we need to mount this to slash media slash cd-rom slash media cd-rom okay already mounted now next we need to go to the media just need to copy this uh, by the way you can actually download this curator community edition uh what do you call this the um, installation uh, guide or the uh, overview uh, by downloading from the same uh, what do you call this um, 
website which is actually this one yeah so you can just click on this get dsm configuration guide and you can read documentation a lot of pdfs you can actually download to help you uh in configuring your uh curator okay so i'm gonna copy this and paste to this one and you can just type ls to see the uh, dsm a lot of dsms are you know are uh, what do you call this <sighs> listed yeah okay so uh let me check if i can actually down uh you know install this uh, microsoft windows event so this is what i need to get yeah, oh maybe uh, dsm sorry supposed to be dsm microsoft uh, so here uh, dsm microsoft windows see this one yeah so i'm going to install this to install this you need to run yum dash y install uh, space install and the rpm name so let's just type <coughs> yum dash y install dsm uh, then uh, microsoft windows yep just press tab to auto complete this and i think that's it yeah so you just need to install it Okay, it says that uh, loaded plugin, blah, blah, blah. This system is not registered with the entitlement server. Uh, so let's look at ours just to show you something. MS DSM. Star. So we got, you know, Microsoft, yeah, from here we got Microsoft Azure, DHCP Server, Operations Manager, Microsoft Windows. This is actually correct one, eh? Yeah, so let's just try again. Yum, that's why install. Yeah says uh, does not update install package okay never mind yeah so it's just to show you on how to actually install any supported modules yeah you can also check for nasus for example ls dsm that's nasus star oops none oh okay we got hmm no Nessus or maybe like a snort. Oh, we got Sophos, but no snort. Okay, anyway, this is optional. Yeah, so if you want to get, uh, you know, in touch with the uh, DSM, please do some readings uh, on the uh, uh, guide so once we're done with this one uh, then we can connect and configure some other things here yeah so uh, the next thing to do is to uh, install the WinCollect yeah so WinCollect is actually an agent that will be installed on a Windows machine. So therefore, we need to do in uh, two different uh, locations. The first thing to do is to actually install the WinLogon, uh, sorry, WinCollect, uh, what do you call this, on the appliance, like uh, on this particular uh, uh, curator man uh, manager, yeah. So you can go to the admin, and let's check whether WinCollect 
has already installed or not. Okay, go to the systems com uh, data sources, I think. Yeah. Go to the data sources. Yeah, we don't see any uh, wind collect here. Yeah. So, what you need to do to uh, add the data sources is by adding the wind collect. So, for that, I'll be using the, uh, you know, Let me open up WinSCP uh, because you can actually use WinSTP to actually, uh, you know, quickly, you know, copy and paste the file uh, from and to the next machine. Yeah. So SFTP, let me see. WinSFTP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. WinSCP, not the FTP. Sorry. So I'm going to use this to you know assist me on copying the file uh, or files from window my windows machine to my curator ce so i'll connect to 1.168.1.2 which is the curator uh sorry let me just click okay uh, i forgot to mention uh, put the username and password so 1.168.1.2 and the username is root. The password is the password that I have set earlier. And select yes to accept the key without adding the key. Okay, and now uh, we're here. And if you want to go for the uh, WinCollect installation, let's have a look at the WinCollect uh, installation procedure. So so we need to download the WinCollect from the support. Yeah, see this one? Yeah. You can just use Google to uh, find the WinCollect agent SFS bundle installation. And we need to create uh, media. Yeah, so let me create media updates. So from here, mkdir slash media updates. And then um sorry it's supposed to be here this is my yeah and i need to also create the store tmp so just oops sorry okay dear the store tmp it looks like it already exists okay now uh, I need to copy the file. This is actually the uh, latest version of the SFS file. Yeah. That I have downloaded. Yeah. So. Let me uh, run my zoom. And again, let me show you. So this is the. Uh, file that I have uh, previously downloaded from uh, IBM website. So you need to copy this file to just drag and drop and click OK. So once the file is already there, you can uh, actually right click and uh, oh, sorry. I need to actually, yeah, let me, let me just delete this. I need to go to the store TMP and drag and drop this file. Actually, you can, you know, go to any different directory or folder and then copy the file. Yeah. So I'm just following the procedure. Okay. So just go to the store TMP and let's type the ls star the sfs so we got a file next is we need to use this command um, let me see example mount some something loop something something and then media update okay let me just copy this and 730 
as media updates. Okay. And then go to the media updates and you know, install. Oops. So go to the media updates and ls and then type dot slash install installer okay this will actually install the server you know component of the uh, win collect you wish to continue yes remember that previously we do not see any win collect here uh, in this data sources <clears throat> uh, menu so I will select here so it says that you need to restart event or you'll need to start a user interface advanced restart event collection services so I will choose number two and 13 packages to install it's gonna take a while to uh, finish the installation yeah like it's definitely much faster than the previous installation the um, previous installation of the uh, key reader itself took about roughly 45 minutes yeah so it says uh, installing agent win collect with agent something something uh, the version number is 7.2.9 dash 96 so again i would suggest that you use the um win scp to do the copy and paste from your windows system to your uh curator uh, vm yeah to a specific directory uh, where the uh, guides uh, told you to. You know. Yeah, so I'm gonna finish this installation and I'll get back to you as uh, soon as. looks like the installation is done so uh, by the way during the installation of the uh, this uh, SFS the patch you will see something like this oh sorry it actually um, you know pop up with a small ma uh, message I was not able to catch it so let me try to log on again to the uh, yeah to the uh, key reader and because we do not use anything uh, else uh, with the win SCP so you can just I can just close it so so oops you want enable yes okay so once we're done uh let's check yeah you'll see something like this earlier it says that um connection uh, terminated you need to restore connection yeah don't worry still uh you know tomcat is restarting yeah so you need to go to the admin oops yeah thing is still restarting so you can try to connect or reconnect yeah, i think we need to wait for a while for the um, tomcat to um, finish restarting <clears throat> let me refresh 
Yeah, still not ready yet. So let's get back later. I think it's uh, ready. So it says that we need to press enter to close screen. So uh, running the cleanup, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we can now press enter to close the screen. Yeah. And let's refresh this page. Of course, you can type uh, system CTL status concat. It looks like it's running correctly, active or running. Yeah, it's gonna take a while to reconnect to the uh, console. <clears throat> so you need to hang on for a while. Yeah. Meanwhile, let me open up a um, client. Yeah, this is an example of a client that will be, or I would say the operating system, operating system that will be used as the, uh, what you call this, as the asset to be monitored. And therefore we need to install the agent. Let me just refer the snapshot. So, or maybe, uh, I think I'll just refer to snapshot. Yeah, so. So I'm going to um, uninstall the agent just to make it uh, clean. So. collect okay let's just go to the uh, folder where we install the uh, we normally install the um, program so here uh, let me see okay it looks like uh, clean when a uh, collect agent was not installed yet yeah nothing yet so this is a clean windows so I've already copied in collect. So uh, in order to um, install your WinCollect agent, you will need to download WinCollect from the uh, IBM website. You can easily use Google to search. Okay. And yeah, so let's log in to the uh, Curator Security Intelligent uh, console. Okay, the next step to do is just to make sure everything works fine. Okay, so you have to wait for a while for the wait for the application uh, to load correctly. Now let's go to the admin. And verify, verify that uh, WinCollect uh, agent, the server component, has been correctly installed. Yeah. <clears throat> this is very important because uh, you'll need to make sure that your agent uh, uh, for the data sources has correctly been installed. So go to the data sources and yeah, now we can see the win collect. Let me uh, zoom the screen so we can just go to the win collect. So you have to do this before you even install your win collect agent on your Windows uh, machine. Yeah, that will be used as your asset. Okay, uh, to be monitored. Okay, so if you go to the win collect <clears throat> and 
we need to do certain things here. Uh, oops, I think we need to authorize the services first. So to go to the system configuration and let me see, uh, it's under the let me see, uh, where is it? We will need to find a uh, an option for us to actually enable the uh, service. Uh, let me get back. Suppose we have system configuration. <sighs> let me see. Authorize. Yeah, here. It's under user management. So go to the admin, system configuration, user management, or under user management, you can find authorized services. This is where we can actually authorize the service. So we need to add this. Add authorized service. And you can put service name, for example, WinCollect agent. Yeah. And user role would be like win collect. Yeah, this user role is uh, will be used for the uh, account that will start win collect. Yeah, security profile admin and set no expire. Okay, and create a service. Once the service is created, take note on this authentication token. Okay, so you are going to use this later on. Okay. So let me just copy this. Of course, you can get back to this one later. And then you can go to the uh, uh, data sources and go to the win collect. And next is we need to specify our destination. Yeah, so you go to the destination. This will be used by the WinCollect. Yeah. So you can add destination. WinCollect forwarding destination properties. You put like uh, WinCollect destination. Host name WinCollect. For example, one, anything. Yeah. This is just for your, uh, you know, your, uh, the, the settings that will be used for you before you install or while you're actually installing your wind collect okay so we got this destination of course you can actually use many different destinations uh, that will provide the uh, forwarding uh, from the client or from the uh, agent to the uh, uh, curator yeah so don't forget to select deploy changes and you have to wait for a while on this one now while waiting for this uh, deployment to commence let's get back to our vm let's try to install this right click run as the admin this is actually the win collect agent uh, executable file i'm running uh, the 64 bit of uh, this win collect and oh yeah it looks like i used to i mean i've installed the win collect previously so remove and then let's reinstall yeah it's okay for your experience okay so close it okay next accept the license you can put any organization you like and then here this is where you need to select whether you want to install win collect agent to be managed by curator console or a standalone that will be managed by that will not be managed by curator console 
by default, I want uh, use to use this man, uh, manage, which is the uh, stating that win collect agent will be managed by curator console. Click next. Yeah, you can put your host, for example, win 10 TST or desktop. Remember the authentication code that I copied from the um, uh, authorized services. This is the time you will use that authentication token okay so i copy this one control v and then you can put configuration uh, for the console which is 192.168.1.2 my curator uh, manager or the console by default it will open port uh, or use this port 8413 yeah and if you want to check whether the port is open on curator it's very simple You can go to the uh, console and then type net stat and LP, then um, grab uh, 84, let me see, 8413. 8413. See, it's listening. Yeah. Okay. Now let's get back to this one, click next. And this is where you can create the log source. Now remember the identify we have to, uh, configured earlier in the source or destination. Yeah, remember earlier, let's, let me get back to you. So under the data sources, <coughs> when collect, <coughs> and go to destinations this is where you can actually enable or add the forwarding for many destinations yeah so name is win collect test host name is win collect one okay let's get let's get back to this one okay so win collect let's me just write down win collect Yes, remember that the name should be uh, must be the same and destination is win collect one and you can take on any event logs that you want uh, to be forwarded okay by default i'm uh, using this security system application right next and next and yeah so there's a syslog status server we don't use this yeah so just leave it blank and next okay, it's gonna take a while to install the agent okay we're done and let's check the status by selecting or typing services and press enter and you can check the win collect services and by default if you look at this one by default the win collect service is running yeah so this is your win collect okay now so tests you can actually uh, open up mmc and then we will need to enable certain things here, like for example, audit. So I will add and then move snap in called group policy and click finish. And then you can expand this and go to the, um, let me see uh, security settings go to the local policies so here we will need to enable the audit policy so for example audit logon events success failure audit account management success failure Logon event, success failure, object access, success failure. It depends on your preference. Yeah. 
uh, maybe privilege use, success failure, uh, system events, success failure. Okay. And so you can close this one and then run the command gp update slash force. Oh, sorry. It's supposed to be gp update slash force to update the policy, right? And let's get back to our key reader admin console. Uh, we will need to go to the um, offenses, for example, just to see if we can configure certain roles that will be triggered. Yeah. So actually, you don't need to 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 go to these offenses. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to fine tune the roles to get the immediate effect, you can go to the roles and modify. So for the meantime, let's just go to the log event activity. Yeah. And let me try to log off and log on uh, to this one. Right click, sign out. And uh, before that, let's try to go to the uh, admin just to verify whether our win collect agent has been uh, configured correctly. I mean, installed and configured correctly and detected by our curator so you go to the agent yep mm, looks like the agent is not there yet uh, what happened let me see okay um, Under user management, uh, let me see. Authorized services. Can check again. Um, let me log on to this. Uh, windows and if you want you can reinstall your win collect but anyway let me just restart my agent So sometime it will take a while to actually see the um, uh, agent uh, being uh, monitored here under the uh, wind collect. You should actually see that uh, the agent has been uh, correctly installed. So if you don't see this, you might want to repeat the uh, steps. Okay, so. Hang on for a while. Let me get back to you on the uh, win collect agents problem. Uh, so the problem exists because of this. So I uninstalled and reinstalled uh, the win collect agent. So I was wrongly. Uh, putting the log source identifier as win collect destination it's supposed to be a reverse one so log source identifier should be this one let me uh, yeah so when you go to the win collect and the uh, identifier should be the the host name okay while the destination is the win collect dest okay 
So let's lock source identifier, win collect one, and destination win collect destination. Okay, and next and next and finish. And we can check again. Win collect. It is started. Okay. So win collect should be started running automatically. Okay. You can of course restart this if you like. And if there's no issue, you should actually be able to see the uh, win collect agent being registered, being managed by the console. Okay, so while the service is being restarted, let me check by selecting the agent. Yeah, hopefully nothing goes wrong, see? Yeah, so sorry, apologize for the mistake. Yeah, so now we have the WinCollect agent uh, being uh, monitored by this uh, curator console. So notice that the status is unavailable. Uh, automatic update is true. Okay, so just close it for a while. Let's get back to this one. And wait until the wind collect is started uh, or restarted correctly. And then let's revisit the uh, wind collect agent uh, status on our key writer okay so Okay, it's done. Hmm, looks like there's an error, but let's just revisit this. So I need to deploy changes. If you want, you can also restart this machine just to make sure it's uh, correctly being uh, configured by the uh, Windows. Okay, so just leave it running and So hang on for a while. See the status of our agent. So here, win collect agent uh, running on the host win 10 DST, and the status is running and. It is enabled and the automatic updates is also enabled. We're done with this one with the uh, installation of the agent and by default, this agent will be monitored. And you can even look at the lock sources by selecting lock sources. Okay, now uh, nothing much here. Yeah, so let's 
open up the uh, log activities and let's generate some logs so nothing nothing here yeah only warning message and something yeah so let's uh, do a login let's log into this one using different password for example wrong password one so because we have enabled the audit earlier it should actually generate log okay so you can see we got system notification local hmm. Try to uh, log on incorrectly. If you want, you can go to the WinCollect agent again and check the log related to the agent see if the log is being collected even the yeah so remind me later um maybe you can go to this show events yeah we got event matches Go to the log activities. I should be able to see some logs here. Uh, let me check again if um, we have uh, successfully enabled the audit. So go to the MMC and Add the group policy. Yeah, it's a bit slow here. Yeah, go to the MMC at the uh, group policy snap in and expand local computer policy window settings. We can go to the security settings and local policies uh, and then go to the uh, audit policies. Everything is correctly set, success, failure. Um, this one. Yeah, so let's have a look at this. So we have enabled this, this, this 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 and this this one are not enabled okay should be okay yeah it should be correct uh, yeah i've got some yeah let's just go to the um, last hour hmm Yeah, it looks like uh, it's running, but it doesn't actually show me something related to the uh, logon. Anyway, let's check. Uh, let's go to the offenses and then let's create a very simple rule. Yeah. Before that, let me check what is the IP address of this. And this is 1.8 or 1.8. We go to the rules and let's just create a very simple rules or rule or maybe just modify any rules available like for example port scan right and i'll customize this rule 
course can detect it double click and yeah let me test one rule see if it works correctly so let me remove the remaining one okay so on events okay potential ports can detect it on event of flow which are detected by global maybe not only local yeah then you can go to the when the local network is one of the following network add double click and double click on destination and then you change the following network to for example all because we're monitoring all of the networks you just go to all edit uh, add and then click submit and uh, on the following network also set to all submit and yeah so by default it will be uh, set to recon the group click next and this is where you can actually um, yeah so you can select rule action so ensure detected event or flow is part of the offense so it will be shown in the offense uh, tab or offenses you can put any annotation yeah for example uh, test annotation and under the uh, role response you can also s uh, modify the severity credibility and relevance for the meantime i do not change any to anything yet i do not change uh, severity credibility and relevance and you can put ensure that dispatch event is part of the offense and you can put like you know just for testing should set or replace the name of the associate defense okay so this will actually uh, sh it should be selected as part of this dispatch new event yeah yeah this one is also the yeah just a sample yeah. and don't forget to select enable this role right okay next okay we're done with this you can review and by default is set now you can go to the admin and yeah let's try to look at the log events and let's try to do a very simple scan on our target uh and map dash n 191.68.1.8 and see if we can actually detect the event Yeah, see offense created yeah and we got this potential port scan detected yeah. so okay so you can even add the metric and then modify the parameter to associated with offense okay and add a filter and you can see the events yeah um can clear the events just to see uh, I've, I've seen the lock uh, created earlier yeah so yeah system notification local blah 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 and let's look at the offenses see if we can actually get this in our offenses yeah it is shown as potential local ports can detect it uh, the offense source is one uh, 1.6 which is my IP yeah this is my IP and the target shown is oh destination IP is 2 and it has multiple one yeah 
So anyway, we have uh, successfully tested the uh, offenses and yeah, the locks. Yeah. And let's try again on the uh, non-successful uh, login. Our oops, right click, sign out, and. Try to incorrectly put the password several times and see if we can get the um, events created. Okay, I need to check the, uh, oh, let me see, uh, why is it not recorded? Uh, let me just get back to the in collect. Let's go to destination. I think we need to check the data sources. Let me see. So under the log sources, double click and let's have a look at this one. Yeah. Okay, so let me check the WinCollect. Um, hmm. Just did collect agent, which is correct. Okay. Um, source type Windows Security Event Log, which is correct. Log source identifier correct. Okay, event nothing much. Uh, so we log the security log type no filtering system. The event type information no warning all. Hmm. Nothing much here. Looks like our log uh, sources has been correctly configured. Yeah, so anyway, um, let's check again the agent. Show events. Okay, then go to the log activities again. Hmm. Okay, I'm trying to find out why is it not actually triggered. Yeah. So let me get back to you on this. Let's do the uh, troubleshooting on the uh, lock activity or the Windows event 
for events which were not uh, shown in the this log activity so let's go to the admin go to the log sources and i think we need to configure something if i'm not uh, mistaken go to the edit select and then scroll down um okay so everything looks fine until here so here win collect agent is this one correct and then target internal destination so yeah initially it was none now we set to event collector zero local host tcp and target destination is when collect desk which were configured which was actually configured earlier in the previous steps and looks okay and then okay close it and then let's see if we can get the locks so shown here uh check for the no changes to deploy and let's try to uh, log on incorrectly uh, put different password or a wrong password and see if we can catch this hmm okay let me enable this tool and enable this tool and let's uh, edit this again okay so try to deploy changes nothing much there um, looks like nothing here let me restart my windows and see if we can actually you know uh, test the um, the log or the events being forwarded. Two, three. Okay. Let's see if this is there anything? Yeah. Now we got this. We can collect message and showing me something. yeah store but uh, not yeah success audit yeah I, I've seen this yeah I saw this yeah offense created can go to the offenses um, log activities yeah so you see this one success audit yeah so this is what I'm looking for so we're done with this yeah so <clears throat> yeah so we can see the offenses being shown here yeah and oh how come there's no offenses here okay never mind uh if you have any problem with uh, the offenses not being showed here yeah what you can do is you can go to this um Yeah, here there's a, an IBM um, community uh, 
discussion about offenses not being created in yeah you can expand the the the, the post and these are the steps okay so i did uh, search some uh if you go to the youtube earlier you can search for the win collect curator and there are several you know information about uh you know installing win collect yeah so you can try to check from this uh or some of these videos okay i was opening this earlier um yeah, here and it did I, it, it did give me something but uh, not really that much yeah so anyway so once you're you can see all of these which are expected then we're done with our installation and configuration Okay, so I hope that uh, this tutorial will be uh, is useful for you. And if you have any question, let me know. Bye bye.